So do you ever just get that feeling where like you know what you're doing in life? Or maybe when you were young you were just so adept to like playing the piano or maybe you just have a natural talent for sports. Maybe you have like a whole different mindset from other people. There's some jobs out there or like career fields or you know special passions that sort of have the same pathway. Some people are lost in life and they don't really know what career path to choose but there are some like key factors, some like key passions and skills and like creativity and certain mindsets that people have that sort of lead them towards one route and it happens to be like a perfect route for them. So how can you know what's right for you? So if you have like these key character traits I'm about to tell you, then you might be perfect to become like an engineer or like specifically an environmental engineer. So let's jump right into it. The first thing is that you love to solve problems. So you know generically all engineers love to solve problems. I know this is like a really generic list. For the most part, that's what their specialty is. So specifically for like environmental engineers, we want to make things more environmentally more sustainable so what we do is we have to come up with a way to solve that issue so say for example you want to get from point A to point B right now we have a car to do that we have a gasoline powered car but you know in time throughout the years if you keep using gasoline powered cars then you know there's a lot of problems with that in itself where you know it emits lots of pollutants that could hurt people's health you know it creates lots of you know climate change related problems so overall you want to steer away from that so the problem is, how can we get from point A to point B sustainably? And that's where an environmental engineer would show up. And so what we'll do is, we'll have to think of a way to switch from, you know, still maintaining our goal, going from point A to point B, except now with a twist, with a better solution to that. And that's what we do. Just finding some process that has already been set, and just making it better. That's how we solve problems. And if you just so happen to love solving these problems, then hey, this might be the job for you. The next reason is that you're creative. So I feel like some of these bullet points are about to be sort of related to each other. So for example, if you love to solve problems, then you have to think of some creative way to solve that problem in the first place. There's already a set process, but now you have to think of a new process. So when I was a kid, instead of playing video games, I had Legos. More specifically, I played with like Bionicles. I don't know if they still manufacture that, but even so, those were the cool toys back in the day when I was a kid. And so what they had was like these Lego pieces where you, you just follow the manual, like building an IKEA furniture. You follow the instructions and you build whatever like model or sculpture that they had in the box. It's almost like similar to building a Gundam or whatever like that. They had like set guidelines on how to build what you want. But after you collect like multiple Lego figures or like Bionicle figures, then you start to think, how can I like play with them? How can I you know, disassemble them and reassemble them all combined together? So for example, they had like these three figures, but you know, after you build all three and you play for a while, you get sort of bored of them. And so what you do, if you want to impress your cousins for the next party, you disassemble them and you combine all three of them together, just using whatever creative mindset you have. So I love doing that as a kid. I still have that figure right now. It is like a combination of like all my creations combined to one gigantic like uh, two foot tall figure. I don't think I had the heart to throw it away just because I had so much fun with it as a kid. But even so, I'm just trying to say that, you know, as long as you have this creative mindset, then, you know, you're perfect to be an engineer. The next thing is that you plan for the future. So let's go back to the car example. Going back from trying to figure a solution to, to still, you know, solve the problem of going from point A to point B, you have a car. But long term, if you keep using that car, you know, you'll still be emitting pollutants, you'll still be damaging other people's health. It's not going to be sustainable, so how can we think of a process, a new process, a more sustainable process that will be good and sustainable long term? So for the next 10 years, the next 50 years, 100 years, how can we make this better? How can we build a vehicle that goes from point A to point B? Again, we're still trying to solve that issue. How can we make that better and sustainable? You know, how can we make this bridge last for 70 years, 100 years with minor, you know, maintenance because we don't want to build a whole new bridge every single like 50 years you want to just have a bridge that will last forever indefinitely if you can so not only planning for the future in terms of like building a new sustainable process maybe planning for the future in terms of your own personal life too so maybe like you want to buy a house you have to save up for that so you got to create like a budget and so on just to plan for the future it doesn't just stick with engineering it should really affect your entire life maybe even your personal life too next is that you'd rather work outdoors than work in an office job. So as an environmental engineer, you have the word environment in the title, so you're going to be outside in the world, in the environment, not really stuck inside a cubicle. 
you'd rather be outside, out in the open, you know, smelling the fresh air or smelling whatever it is, rather than sitting down for eight hours a day. You like to move and you like to be active. You'd rather hear like the sounds of birds chirping than like your office neighbor talking or complaining about whoever. You like that nature environment. And lastly, you have a room full of plants. So I don't know if you can see it. I'm pretty sure you can, but I got like some plants out in the background. They're pretty much surrounding my entire room. Plants are much more easy to take care of than like pets or like children. So really all you gotta do is just water them. They give me like energy and life to this room. And again, they're low maintenance. They don't really talk back. They don't cry. They don't complain. They give me oxygen. You know, I give them carbon dioxide. You both benefit from each other. So like I'm happy with it. So my room is basically like a jungle. Uh, if you have like also the same similar interests or you just love having like a jungle-like area or just like love being outside, being surrounded by plants, then of course some sort of environmental related or sustainable related career path is good for you. So like that's really all you need. You just need a couple of these key points and then you'll realize, oh maybe I'm not interested in math or maybe I'm not interested in history, I'm not interested in these fields, but I know what I am interested in. It's geared towards this certain field geared towards the environment. You don't even have to major in this to like have passion in it. You don't have to be like academically certified to follow this field. So long as you incorporate it in your life, you know, just go out there and learn something new from it or just enjoy it and like habitually do it as a hobby, then this field is for everyone. So hopefully this helps you narrow down some of your like questions or like concerns whether or not this field is good for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.